Hello and welcome to our visual guide to creating assets in XPA. XPA is one of our longest serving applications and falls into the delivery element of the APS optimization program. Our focus here is to provide you with comprehensive, compliant financial statements in an easy and efficient manner. And a part of this is the ability to maintain a fully detailed and integrated asset ledger, which will post all necessary movements to your trial balance for you. Let's have a look to see how we do that in XPA. So in our XPA file, we first need to create an asset group. In the asset group section, I'm going to select my master chart and I'm going to pull down my preloaded asset groups. Now the purpose of these asset groups is to keep similar assets together and it also contains the account codes for the integration with the XPA general ledger. Now, just like uh, accounts, when I'm adding accounts in my, to my chart, I can either select individual assets or I can bring all of them in. Now, the all function didn't work for us in this particular case because we'd already added some, or we were already using these particular codes. So the integration is very particular about that. It doesn't let you double dip on particular accounts. If I look at the integration, you'll see I've got cost control, depreciation charges, and my expense and PL gains. These are the codes that the system will write to when it does its GL integration. As you'll see here, we maintain tax and book ledgers, as well as setting defaults for depreciation method, calculations and rates. Now, it's very important. You cannot change the integrated ledger once you've started adding assets. Okay, the other options around method and calculation and rate, they are all defaults that can get changed per asset, but the integrated ledger cannot be changed. Now, when you're adding an asset, the first thing that you need to do is actually process, you're gonna be processing your journal entries. Okay, and uh, usually when you're bringing in some data, if that involves processing the purchase or the take on of a particular asset. Now, all additions, when you're running an integrated asset ledger, all additions should be processed via 970 being the asset suspense account. You debit 970 instead of the asset code. You never code to the asset code directly when you use an integrated ledger. And then you process the other side to cash or whatever else. People have asked before, why do we do this? And the reason is when we actually go to process the addition of the asset in the asset module, there is no option there to say how we paid for this asset or how this asset came into the business. So we process that journal entry and we put it to 970 being asset suspense. Once I've done that, I can go into the assets module, double click on the asset group that I want to create an asset for and start adding in my group, my group code. This is the sub account for the particular asset. And I'm going to add my motor vehicle. Once I've uh, filled out this first page here, you'll notice the other tabs start to populate. I need to populate things like acquisition date, acquisition cost, depreciation rate and method. These are defaults that came through from our asset groups. And I need to fill this out for tax and book value. Now this particular asset is a motor vehicle and the motor vehicle also has uh, a vehicle cost limit. That's an ATO thing. So we can put a limit for tax purposes on the base value for depreciation. Our book value, as you can see, doesn't have that. So we always maintain, we can maintain two ledgers, a tax and a book ledger. So depending on your client, if your tax depreciation is different to your book depreciation, you get both. And you can see here, if we flick between the tabs, that the depreciation amounts are slightly different and that's due to the limit. I now hit my save and synchronize and this shows me the entries that are going to be processed to my general ledger as a part of this asset acquisition. So let's have a look at the trial balance. And what you'll be able to see is the addition of the asset and also of the depreciation expense. There's our motor vehicle. Now that journal entry has been processed by the system. This is why we don't process manually 
additions to the asset um, register. 970 you'll see isn't showing up on my trial balance because I already added the entry um, as a cash entry and the other side has cancelled out that. So we should always aim for 970 to get cancelled out by the end of our asset additions and subtractions. Another video is going to focus on uh, how to get rid of assets. Okay, and uh, again, it's going to involve posting to 970. Now I'm going to add another asset now, and I'm going to add some desks. I've added the asset, and again, I'm putting in my acquisition date, my initial cost, depreciation rate, all that. Now what some of you may be noticing as you watch this video is that I've added desks to the property improvements asset group. I've made a mistake here. This is not something that I want to do uh, generally. This is not the right code. Okay, but you'll see now that when we try and to delete this asset, we do have a problem. Deleting this asset, because we've processed an entry, okay, I've put it in the wrong place and it's gonna say, I've got cost account entries and period balance. Now, period balance is the problem here, okay? Period balance is what is causing this problem. So what I need to do is I need to reverse out what I've done. I can't just delete things. Now, what you'll notice as you as I start zeroing out the depreciation and then the, the cost amounts, that I have to keep on confirming this. Okay, so far I've had three dialog boxes, four, Actually, we won't include that one, but I've processed those entries. Now, I always do this in two, in two steps. I get rid of the depreciation first, make sure that everything's processed as I want it to, and then I'm going to take out the cost as well. Okay, so I'm going to go back into this asset now. You'll see that I don't have any depreciation. I'm going to clear out the cost. That's warning number four, number five. We're going to clear out the cost in book value. Six, warning number seven, number eight, number nine. The reason why I'm counting these out is to emphasize that if someone tells you they've accidentally deleted an asset, they've hit up to between the other uh, uh, dialogue boxes. I've had to confirm about 11 times that I want to delete this asset. As you can see here in our journals, the reversal entries have been posted. Now I'm going to delete and you'll see it still says entries, but it's not telling me I have a period balance. That means I can get rid of the asset. Okay, so if you add an asset to the wrong place, this is the way to delete it out. Now if we go back to the journals, you'll see that I've posted, I've got a whole bunch of entries here to um, process, uh, to process the movements. One of the big mistakes that we see is people go in and delete these entries because they look messy. Problem is, a lot of these entries look the same, especially in a large file with lots of processing. And you don't know necessarily, you want to, it's, it's hard to know, or it can be hard to know which ones you're deleting. So what I always say to people is the balances have been cleared out. It is a touch more messy because you have some entries there, but it is the safest option to not delete those journal entries. It's just deleting those journal entries just makes it too hard or too easy rather to make a mistake and really mess up your file. And I'm sure if you speak to our support team, they'll tell you that a large portion of the files that they see that have been messed up uh, usually have an issue around assets and around journals being deleted when they shouldn't have been. My golden rule when it comes to asset journals or asset accounts is to never post to the cost accounts and never delete the system entries. That concludes our video on adding assets with a little bonus there on what to do if you've added an asset to the wrong asset group in XPA. This video and more are being provided as a part of our APS optimization program, which seeks to help you get the most out of the modules you use each and every single day. For more information on the APS optimization program and to access more free training resources, please visit the APS Optimization website available via the Practice Hub or visit some of the other videos on our YouTube channel. See you then.